Hi, I'm Bill. And if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to my new uh, German Equatorial Mount. It's the EQ6-R Pro. Uh, up until now, this has been what I have been using over the last year. This is the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro. And I'm just going to cover a couple of the differences between the two. And I think I'll start with payload capacity. And um, I made a couple of notes here. Uh, so the payload capacity of the HEQ5 is stated at 30 pounds. The most I've put on it so far is about uh, 10 pounds with my current uh, Xenostar Z61 filter wheel, camera, uh, pocket power box advance. Um, so an autofocuser, um, but while this is a uh, fine mount and it was sized correctly for my Xenostar 61, um, I kind of have this vision as we move into the next galaxy season uh, next year to uh, get more of a galaxy style uh, hunter telescope, uh, maybe something like a Celestron Edge 8 uh, HD or something still to be decided. So that really took me into the territory where I needed to upgrade my mount. Uh, the payload capacity on the EQ6 R is uh, 44 uh, pounds, uh, the payload capacity. And again, you know, I still have to figure out to how much can I push that in the sense that how close to 44 can I go? Uh, I kind of have a 60% rule right now, uh, but, um, uh, but definitely uh, I've gone up as far as the weight I now have to carry and manage. Uh, I looked at this about a year ago at the time I bought the HEQ5 and I thought, well, this mount might be too heavy for me. Um, clearly this is a heavier mount. Uh, this mount here, um, the uh, tripod weighs 12.3 uh, pounds or 5.6 kilograms. Uh, the, head, um, the head unit up here is 22 pounds or 10 kilograms. And then we move over here to the um, EQ6R uh, and now we're uh, got a 16.5 um, pound uh, tripod or 7.48 kilograms. And then the head unit is uh, 38 pounds or 17.23 kilograms. So clearly uh, a lot of difference in weight. Um, some things here too I need to make a decision on. And uh, as you see right now, I have the QHY Pole Master. I am planning on running this mount uh, without the Pole Master. I'm going to use either Nina's uh, uh, three-point polar alignment or I'm going to explore sharp caps polar alignment as well. Uh, the other thing I kind of wanted to show was um, you can see how big uh, the landing area is here for uh, attaching a mount and so this can expand quite a bit for bigger I guess type uh, dovetails. Uh, I've already placed my uh, telescope into the saddle here and, and it fits just fine, so excited about that. Uh, the other thing too is there is an extension for this core, uh, counterweight bar, and clearly the counterweights here are heavier uh, than the counterweights uh, that come with the HEQ5. Um, other than that, you know, everything is just kind of bigger. Um, you know, it has a uh, Polar scope uh, built in uh, back here. Um, I don't think I'm going to be using it though. And um, you know that's uh, that's the major uh, differences. As you can clearly, maybe you can see here all the bolts for making your azimuth and uh, altitude adjust adjustments are a lot heavier than what you would find on your HEQ5 uh, Pro. And um, yeah, so uh, that's, a, oh, and then over here, um, it has a connector, a screw-on connector for your 12-volt DC power, uh, so that's, uh, that's good. And um, 
then I run without the hand controller. I'm just using Nina, so I uh, plug a uh, USB style cable into into this port here uh, with the RJ45, and then the other end is uh, USB uh, that plugs into the, my pocket power box advance. So um, I'm looking for an opportunity on uh, to get this uh, under load. I have powered it up. I made sure that it's uh, was not dead on arrival. Uh, interface seamlessly with uh, Nina nighttime imaging and astronomy software that I use. Uh, so that was really nice to see that uh, work. And so now I am going to uh, probably co go down to GMARS the end of uh, April again. Uh, just to do some calibra a calibration run uh, where you know I can calibrate using the uh, I think celestial equator. I want you, there's a certain uh, um, parameters that you want to use. I've been digging, as I said in the video I just released about this is the year to dig into guiding and PhD uh, PhD two. So um, you know, I'm going to plan that trip. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to uh, work to do a calibration run. Again, I'll probably wind up using my Xenostar Z61 and, you know, use uh, the Pinwheel Galaxy as an object. But I think around 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, there may be uh, a nebula uh, that's available to me. And even though it's only available for two hours, I might try and take some images of that. So, anyway. Um, Really, I want to thank the people on uh, Cloudy Nights uh, back in December of 2020 when I was exploring getting into uh, astronomical imaging. Uh, many of the threads said, it's the mount, it's the mount, it's the mount. And uh, I must say that encouraged me to buy the HEQ5. Uh, and clearly, I think that was the right decision. And now, since I want to go up in uh, the size of and weight of the uh, next telescope, whether that be a refractor or something like the Celestron uh, Edge 8 HD, uh, it's the mount. So, you know, uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very happy. I listened to the advice when it came to getting the right mount uh, that was being offered up on cloudy nights. Okay, uh, that's about all I have right now. Um, the next uh, videos you probably will see this uh, uh, mount in will be something where I'm down starting to do a calibration run. And, uh, you know, uh, other than that, uh, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. I uh, really appreciate the people who take the time to drop into the channel and view the. Uh, uh, the videos and in particular i'd like to thank the subscribers thank you very much for your subscription uh, other than that see you next time